Friday, June 23rd is Bring Your Pet to Work Day. So ahead of that special day, we're joined by the Fresh Pet Senior Brand Manager, Jake Trainer. Jake, great to have you here today. Thanks a bunch for coming out. Um, you know, just really appreciate you coming out for today. You know, we, we're celebrating a nice little event here today. It's Take Your Pet to Work Week. And we really wanted to bring together pets and people. Uh, share certainly a little bit about the Fresh Pet brand. We'll also have just a fun day. Um, and, you know, kind of bringing together a couple great organizations we have out here also, the ASPCA and Animal Haven. And certainly to talk a little bit about Fresh Pet as a brand and some of the food that we make for pets. Well, many of us know about Fresh Pet. When you're walking down the grocery store aisle, you might see the refrigerated stand for Fresh Pet. So can you tell me a little bit about what makes Fresh Pet different from your standard pet food out there? Absolutely. Um, so Fresh Pet is the first and only maker of all natural, fresh, real food for pets that, that comes from the fridge. And really, the, the brand was founded around the idea that as we see our pets as part of our family, and as we look to feed them healthier, fresher, less processed food, we want to do the same for our pets. And, you know, our co-founders had really founded the brand on that premise. And the brand or the products that we actually deliver and that we create are all crafted with U.S. farm-raised beef and chicken, whole ingredients, real fruits and vegetables that you can see. And really from the moment the products are made to the, the moment that they arrive in stores, they're kept cold. When it comes to pets, it seems as though more pet owners are being careful about what they put into their pets' mouths, dogs and cats alike. So we know that the company's stock price is close to where it was when it first launched as a public company. But what trends do you see going forward for pet, uh, Fresh Pet? So, I mean, certainly some great company performance from a stock standpoint. And, you know, we continue to see more and more consumer adoption on a monthly basis. Um, you know, we see our household penetration continuing to increase. Product velocity continues to increase. And certainly store growth, another key aspect for the brand. So, um, you know, those are really some of the key focus areas. It's really around how do we continue to capture more people with a fresh pet story, kind of the mission behind the brand, and really the healthy pet food that we, uh, we've really created for pets. And we think the more that we can tell that story, the more people are really going to react and start to try the product out and, you know, hopefully continue to expand. I'm at an event here at the Soho Grand in New York, and I'm joined by the ma a manager of the ASPCA, who is Alyssa Fleck, and she's joining me with a special guest, Melvin. Alyssa, thanks for joining me today. Absolutely. This is Melvin. Melvin is a three-month-old terrier mix, and Melvin is available right here at the Soho Grand today. We're celebrating Take Your Dog to Work Day, and if he doesn't get home, find a home today, then he'll be available at the ASPCA Adoption Center on the Upper East Side, where we we have many dogs and cats available for adoption. And there are many challenges for dogs that are in shelters, so can you tell us a little bit about how important it is for potential pet owners to adopt from shelters versus buying from a breeder or even a pet store? Absolutely. So there are millions of animals in shelters who are looking for a home, so it's so important to adopt and always to really make adoption your first option. Um, adopting a pet is just so rewarding because you're not only saving a life and bringing home a new family member, but you're also opening up space in a shelter and resources so that they can save even more lives. So there are just so many rewards to adopting. And the adoption process, how easy is it and what do people have to do? Yeah, it's very easy. So what we do at the ASPCA Adoption Center, we have a Meet Your Match program where you can come in and fill out a survey to tell us a little bit about your lifestyle, what your home is like, and what type of dog or cat you're looking for. And then we'll introduce you to dogs that we have available that would be a good fit for your lifestyle so that we're making sure that we're matching you with the right pet. And once you fill out that survey, we'll bring you on a tour. We'll introduce you to some pets and hopefully we'll find one that is a perfect fit.
today I'm joined by Dr. Katie Nelson, who you may know from the Dr. Katie Show. So she will tell us a little bit about taking your pet to work. Katie, great to have you here. Thanks so much. I'm so glad you guys were able to come out today. This is a really exciting event. We have dogs up for adoption mm -hmm. and we have you here to tell us about taking care of dogs. Yeah. Now, a lot of office places have allowed uh, their employees to take their dogs mm -hmm. to work, but what are some of the challenges that people should be aware of? Yeah. Well, first off, you need to know your pet. Like, you need to know if your pet is one that's actually going to thrive in this environment or whether it's going to be something that's majorly stressful to them. You know, I have two dogs at home, and one of mine would be fabulous on take your dog to work day and the other one is just not fit for prime time he needs to stay home and chill on his couch because that's just their their personality so first and foremost know your pet and know whether this is something that's going to work out for them or not because you don't want to be the person in the office whose dog is trying to nip at other dogs or nip at other people god forbid um, so knowing that personality and being realistic about it is very important and Katie, you are a veterinarian, so I'm sure you have a lot of clients who have uh, challenges with their uh, dogs, but uh, good things as well. Yeah. So what do you advise for pet owners out there in terms of dogs living a healthy lifestyle? Well, you have to think about what, you know, when we're trying to be fit and healthy, one is one of the first things that we think of. We think about our diet, and that's what today is all about. We're talking about the the, the link between nutrition and long-term health, and so that's why, you know, Fresh Pet actually sponsored this event, was because, you know, they truly believe in feeding the healthiest way possible, all natural, no preservatives, all of that, low carbs, that's what we all try to do, and so why not think about that for our pets as well, because, you know, 80% of it is nutrition 20% of it is exercise as we all know but you got to start with that nutrition read those labels and make sure that you know what's going in your body as well as what's going into your pets well Katie I do follow a couple of star dogs on Instagram yes. and I noticed that a lot of those dogs get fresh food mm -hmm. so some of the owners might cook up some chicken or beef for them and mix it up with fruit or veggies mm -hmm. but what makes fresh pet different from just regular food well, this is a way of doing that without having all of the time and expense involved in that. Um, because with Fresh Pet, you know, they're able to buy in bulk. So it's going to be a little bit less expensive than you having to go out and buy those organic chicken breasts and all those organic carrots and then take all of that time to cook it up and make sure you know the recipes because it's not as simple as just throwing together, you know, some chicken and potatoes and carrots for our pets. There has to be a lot of balance that goes into that as well. So this is complete and balanced nutrition already done for you, but it's the same quality as if you cooked it at home. And last but not least, mm -hmm. before we wrap it up, how do you know how much you should feed your dog? Well, that's going to depend a lot on A, the size of your dog, B, the age and health conditions of your dog, and C, the lifestyle. So if your pet is extremely active and he's an 80-pound, 9-year-old dog, he's going to have a lot different nutritional needs than a 2-year-old Yorkie, you know, who sits on the couch all day long. So that's something you need to work with your veterinarian on. Make sure that your pet is a healthy weight and know exactly how many of those calories you need to be feeding a day. You can definitely follow follow the guidelines on your pet food bag or, or roll, but talking with your veterinarian about those exact numbers is probably the best way of going about that.